Battlefield Bad Company 2 is one of the premier modern warfare shooters out there in the market right now. A bunch of the features that we have in the game that really make it stand out are the tactical destruction, the multiplayer settings across the different maps and terrains, very large scale, the vehicles that we have in the game, all of which are drivable and pilotable, and tons and tons of customization and persistence. Battlefield Bad Company 2 on the PC is 3D vision surround ready, and it's great. As soon as you put on those glasses, it just pops out of you. The experience is very visceral, very real, feels like you can jump out and touch it. So with 3D vision surround, you have multiple monitors set up while it's in 3D. Uh, it's definitely a brand new experience that for the first time when I saw it, was really blown away. Usually the first time you see someone put on 3D vision glasses and play Battlefield Bad Coming 2, in um, particular with 3D surround, uh, you want to put your hands underneath to pick up their jaw. Very cool. Often Sometimes it just goes right to the floor. You get the suck in wow moment and they just take it all in. The destruction, you know, you set off a building, and you blow up the whole wall and you can just feel those particles really coming at you. It makes you want to almost put your hands up and block them away. Just Cause 2 is an action-adventure game set in a fictitious country called Pano. The main character, Rico, is sent there by a government agency to rescue the country from a tyrannical dictatorship. Someone not dancing to Uncle Sam's tune? It's a fast-paced game full of stunts and explosions and very high tempo. Rico has the ability to move around the world very quickly using parachutes and planes and vehicles and all that sort of thing, causing chaos everywhere. In fact, chaos is a currency in the game. The more chaos he causes, the more he's succeeded. In Just Cause 2, there's a, a lot of action that takes place on water. You can speed through the water on boats and you can have high-speed shootouts between several boats. We want to achieve a very immersive and beautiful looking water effect. So we've been working in partnership with NVIDIA to uh, take advantage of their CUDA technology to implement some very cutting edge water simulation effects. You'll notice things like wave simulation and realistic ripple effects. I think that the most impressive part is actually the large rolling vistas where you can see the sun reflecting off the ripples on the water. So CUDA and our partnership with NVIDIA allowed us to achieve those graphical effects without having to sacrifice anything on the CPU side in terms of gameplay. Mafia 2 is a third-person action crime game. It's set in the 40s and 50s in a fictional city called Empire Bay. And we follow this guy, Vito Scaletta, and his best buddy, Joe, on their journey into a life of organised crime. <laughs> Don't kill me! The game is a really cinematic experience. Our goal is really to sort of put the player sort of as the central character in a Goodfellas-type story. And I think we, we hit the nail right on the head for achieving that. In our game, we make use of the physics technology by NVIDIA in a lot of different ways. It pushes around many different things in our game, and the most impressive area that people are going to see the game uses is obviously the destructibilities in the environment. For an open world game, it really is impressive what we're doing and the amount of destructibility the player can do. You can shoot out tires on vehicles, you can shoot glass bottles off table, you can smash entire tables, smash down doors. With the full NVIDIA experience, we're able to deliver things like debris sort of piling up on the floor and stuff like that. We have great cloth simulation brought to us by Apex, which is amazing. 
And one of the most iconic things that Mafia guys wear in the 40s and 50s is these big sort of flowing trench coats, you know, and the way they move is, is really important to us that it moves, looks really realistic. By using physics, we're able to create these really dramatic sort of explosions from blowing up a car where you'll see sparks bounce off objects. The ricocheting off weapons, you know, you'll see bullets fly out of the casing of the gun, you'll hear the casing sort of hit the floor. All these things have been driven by physics. So Metro 2033 is a first-person survival action game. It takes place in the Moscow Metro tunnels 20 years after a nuclear explosion. And so some 40,000 people have all taken refuge down in these tunnels. It's really a story of survival, a story of mankind, and we're, we're really focusing everything on story, atmosphere, and setting. The fog that we have, the uh, detail and the textures, the amount of uh, polys in all of our models and our environments. We really think that this is an unprecedented level of detail and something that is sort of going to set a new bar for visuals and games. We're using DirectX 11 uh, for hardware tessellation and also depth of field in the game. What the tessellation provides us is a level of detail in the models that we haven't seen before. So as you approach these models and get closer to them, uh, more polys are actually being added into the models and they're getting more and more detailed. So, you know, we have some very cinematic moments and there's one in particular where a monster just jumps out at you. Uh, he's right up in your face. You won't notice any loss of detail when this happens. He's gonna be inches from you right up in your face as you're attacking him with your knife, yet he's gonna look as real as possible in the game. So using this new hardware like the 480, it allows us with the tessellation to take a lot of the processing power off of the CPU and onto the GPU. With the GPU handling so much of the graphics, we're able to use the CPU for all the other gameplay mechanics. The first time I saw screenshots and video of the game running in DX11, uh, it kind of blew me away. If you look at Just Cause 2, without the enhancements that we've managed to get on the GPU, it would be a, a lesser experience. I definitely hope that a lot of gamers will get the chance to experience 3D vision surround with the proper GeForce graphics card and monitor set up. It's just really a new experience that most people really haven't seen before. So using physics really helps us to really deliver that great cinematic experience that we want Mafia 2 to be. You know, using all these technologies, DirectX 11, uh, you know, something like the 480 for a video card, uh, physics, all these wrapped together to just really let us drive home the immersion, the atmosphere, and the setting of the game and allow us to tell this amazing story.